as we engage in storytelling, we have to ensure that whatever our message is, it's memorable and repeatable. Memorable and repeatable. We want to talk about memory first, about the, memory and re the memorable and repeatable. The brain, the brain has, memory occurs right here in the, in the, uh, in, in the, in the cerebral cortex. And if you look at what bookends or in the front, in the back of memory, you have visualization and you have emotion. And I think emotion is what always makes the connection. It's what reels them in. You can lay the facts out, but if you can create the visual, if you can create the emotion, I can assure you that Sarah felt the visualization and the emotion, and that's what set, that's what set in the subsequent behavior. And by the way, it, what, the Speedo story was memorable and repeatable for her because she told her friend Julia, we have to behave, <laughs> not just me. I want you to understand why I'm smiling, why I'm taking out the trash, why I'm being on my best behavior. If you don't want to be embarrassed, because I know my dad, he'll put it on. He'll put it on. So, memorable and repeatable. I asked you to think about a quote. It had to do with a trial. In the now you can tell me what the quote is. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. It was a months-long trial, and Johnny Cochran, the attorney for O.J. Simpson, when he was delivering his closing statement, his closing argument, because of the glove, the prosecution had O.J. try on a glove that had been shrunk by blood content, and it didn't fit. So, well, and, the, and the prosecution said, the killer wore these. He struggled. I don't know if any of you watched that trial unfold. He put on a theatrical, I'm telling you, the best Hollywood could not put on theatrics like O.J. did. But the jury went in after months and months of trial, they went in and deliberated for less than four hours. And they came back with a not guilty verdict. How many times in deliberation do you think when it looked like the jury was leaning towards guilty, someone said, but Johnny Cochran said, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. It resonated. It was memorable and it was repeatable. And it stuck with them. Let's see how good you are. Let's complete this. I'll make them an offer. Ask not what your country can do for you. Friends don't let friends. That's one small step for man. Milk chocolate melts in your mouth. Oh, everybody chimed in. We got a lot of M&M eaters in this room. Kelly, you need to get some M&Ms put back there. This seems to resonate. We have nothing to fear but... And Kelly, this is for you from Atlanta. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, right? You see, the, you see the connections? I know these have been repeated, but there's an emotional tie to all of these. Martin Luther King, what speech did he deliver? I have a dream. I have a dream. He didn't deliver, I have a strategic plan speech. <laughs> I know you blue thinkers would, okay? But, but that's, you know, that, that's, it's that emotional component. It's awakening the spirit. And that's what you have to do when you deliver your clinical value story. When you take ownership of who you are and where you are in the Aetna landscape, not just as employees, but as co-workers, as, as vendors, as, as, as salespeople, as administrators.